This is Leonard Thompson. As you can probably tell from this picture, Leonard was a pretty happy kid. He loved playing sports, especially football. So I'm sure you can imagine how worried his mother got when he started to get tired really easily. He had all these weird complaints. He was always thirsty, he spent time, a lot of time in the bathroom. So his mom took him to the doctor, who gave her the serious news. Leonard had diabetes. It was the early 1900s and the prognosis was gruesome. Without a way to control his blood sugar, Leonard was def destined to live a life of starvation, with worsening symptoms until one day he would collapse, gasping for air. This is how hundreds of thousands before him had died. The Nobel Prize in 1923 was awarded to Frederick Banting and John McLeod for their discovery and production of insulin. Their discovery renewed hope for diabetics everywhere. They changed what was once a life-ending illness into a disease that can be managed and have changed the lives of 20 million Americans currently living with the disease. To, tell, to, to start, we need to understand a little bit of what diabetes is. Diabetes is a disease of sugar processing in the body. You see, the, the body's muscles and organs all require a source of energy. In humans, and in most animals, this source of energy is glucose. So it turns out that the body needs a really specialized amount of glucose in order to work right. Too little, and the person can faint, as the body shuts down in hypoglycemia. Too much sugar, on the other hand, can trigger a biochemical reaction that causes the blood to become acidic and is a medical emergency. Most people hover around this normal range of sugar, around 80 milligrams to 100 milligrams a deciliter. However, if this process is deranged and a person has spikes of high and low blood sugar, this is called diabetes. Now, there really wasn't much known about the cause of diabetes at the time. People had reason to suspect a defect in an organ called the pancreas, which is a gland that's probably best known for producing really nasty digestive enzymes. What scientists had found at the time was if they removed the pancreas from dogs, these dogs would be get, become diabetic. So now if diabetes is potentially caused by a sick pancreas, one idea is to potentially give healthy pancreas to people with diabetes. While it's a really attractive idea, this approach continually failed in animal studies, making many doubt that, this, that anything really could be done for this disease. Now there's one more thing that people knew about the pancreas. They, know that they knew that at the time that the pancreas was composed of more than one type of cell. The majority of this, the organ was composed, they knew to be composed of this kind of orange substance here, which is the acinar cells. These are the cells that produce the digestive enzymes that leave through the pancreatic duct. There were also another group of cells, uh, which you can see here as small round balls. Well, these things are called uh, islet cells. And there really wasn't much known about these. There were some people that thought that this might harbor uh, some di diabetes fighting agent, but really very little was known about these cells. This brings us to Frederick Banting. Frederick Banting was an orthopedic surgeon. He was a bone doctor working in a town in Canada who didn't have a very big practice and so supplemented his income by lecturing at a local medical school. He had a passing interest in diabetes as he had some exposure to it as a child and was reading up on the subject for a class when he was really struck by an idea. When he was preparing a lecture for one of his classes on diabetes, he was reading a paper from another group, which was also interested in studying the pancreas. So here I can, you can see this diagram of the pancreas, similar to what you saw before, with this orange-yellowish part being the digestive enzyme-producing portion of the pancreas, and these blue balls as the islet cells. This little nub at the end is the pancreatic duct. So this group was very interested in studying the pancreas. But instead of taking the pancreas out, they chose to choke off its outlet, the pancreatic duct, and see what happens to the pancreas over the course of weeks within a dog. 
So when what happened was when they what happened was pretty surprising. After they choked off the pancreatic duct, they found that the pancreas itself atrophied or shrank. But it wasn't the whole pancreas that shrank. It was just this orange, mostly this orange part, the digestive enzyme producing part. So what they were left with was this pancreas with this substantially less amount of digestive enzyme producing organ. Um, with the islet cells, these blue balls of cells, appearing to be preserved. Now this is really exciting for, for Frederick Banting. You see, he thought that there was some factor in the pancreas that prevented diabetes. And his thought was that the reason why previous attempts had failed to rescue diabetes was because the rest of the pancreas, this orange digestive part, chewed it up. That's why he got so excited about this shriveled pancreas. He thought that if you could use, if you could take a pancreas and remove this digestive enzyme producing part, maybe you'd be able to rescue diabetes. So with this idea in hand, he really had nowhere to go. I mean, he's, a, he's an orthopedic surgeon. He, de he dealt with bones all day. There's no way he had the resources or the um, skill to be able to test his idea out. So he wrote to the, to the person that he thought would be the best uh, person to ask, John McLeod who was a prominent diabetologist at the time in Canada. So John McLeod had been around for a while, and he was pretty skeptical. Many others had tried to do something similar to what Banting was doing, feeding pancreas to, to diabetic dogs, and had failed. But as he was going on vacation uh, for the summer to Europe, he offered Banting his laboratory and an assistant for help to try his idea out. So Banting and McLeod's assistant, Charles Best, got to work. They, it, they, worked on, they worked with the model of diabetes, which I alluded to earlier, a diabetic dog. This dog had its pancreas removed earlier. It took months to do the experiment, but when they finally gave this treated pancreas to dogs that had diabetes, the results were encouraging. Blood sugars dropped in diabetic dogs for the first time. Emboldened by the success, Banting, who's shown here on the right, and Charles Best, who's shown here on the left, set out to try this experiment in humans. To do this, they had to isolate the substance in this mixture that was causing the blood sugar to fall. This process took over a year and was made possible with a chemist but when all was said and done, they were ready to try the substance out that they had isolated from the islets. They call this substance insulin. This brings us back to Leonard Thompson, who at the age of 14 now weighed only 65 pounds and was on the edge of slipping into a coma. His life changed when Banting and Best gave him some of this newly extracted insulin. Over the course of days, his symptoms began to disappear and his blood sugar returned to normal. Thompson lived for another decade thanks to insulin, and the news was sensational. Suddenly, a disease that killed millions appeared to become manageable. Banting's team wasted no time in getting the drug out to people. They sold the rights to produce insulin for a dollar, and Eli Lilly got to work producing the substance. Today, there are 20.8 million people who live with this disease a testament to how important Banting and others' work was. So there it is, the Nobel Prize in 1923, awarded to Frederick Banting and John McLeod for their discovery of insulin.